Hello and thanks for joining us on Encore. Coming up on today's show. Your chance to see what the eye of Bamako saw. Malik Sidibe's photography is celebrated at the Fondation Cartier here in Paris. New exhibition proclaims that we are all football with a universal and sociological vision of the beautiful game. And two worlds collide, tango and breakdance make for a vibrant pair as a touring dance show fuses the two genres. He was known as having one of Bamako's brightest smiles, but Malik Sidibe's true talent lied in capturing the grins of his subjects. The Malian photographer's work is currently on show at Paris's Cartier Foundation. This retrospective features examples from his captivating collection of portraits. It's also a snapshot of a newly independent Mali in the 1960s through to the 70s and 80s. Julian Sheda and Catherine Viette went to check it out. Pas besoin d'un gros appareil pour faire des belles photos. <laughs> Lyrical compositions in black and white, capturing a zest for life. Malik Sidibe made a career out of elevating the ordinary to extraordinary. Highlighting ordinary people was what interested him. Not their appearance, but their spirit. He liked that, giving everyone their worth. Sidi Bey was also well known for his portraits. In his Bamako studio, he photographed Mali's youth, a highlight for visitors. It's humanistic photography, the tenderness, the humanity, the sharing between people, and I find it remarkable. We photographers can always learn something when we look at the photos of others, how they frame, how they seize an expression, and here he really manages in such a small space to convey a feeling of interior meditation with these two girls. It's amazing. Fatumata Diabate has been a photographer for 15 years. She rubs shoulders with the master, soaking up his contagious love of life. Often, we'd arrive to his place stressed out, anxious, and when we left, we'd come out with a big smile on our faces like him, because he always had these different stories and sayings. Alongside the portraits, a replica of Sidibe's studio. Visitors are invited to strike a pose and pay homage to one of the legends of West African photography. Now to an exhibition that zooms in on the beautiful game. Football is the focus of a new show in Marseille's Museum of European and Mediterranean Civilizations. We Are All Football offers a new sociological and cultural perspective on the sport with a collection that shows off its fundamental power to bring people together. Florence Gaillard and Julia Kim tell us more. The sun, the sea and football. Three things that define Marseille. Here, the sport is more than just a pastime. It's a religion. And its team, Olympique de Marseille, are kings among men. Little surprise then that football has become the latest subject of an art exhibition at the city's Museum of European and Mediterranean Civilizations. It wants to confront the modern cliches afflicting the sport today. Il faut à un moment donné se rendre compte que nos caricatures at some point, we need to understand how we caricature football. We view the players as ill-mannered brats who make millions, who have bimbos hanging off them, who drive Ferraris. All this amounts to contempt. The uglier side of the beautiful game is laid bare in the exhibition We Are Football, which dedicates a room to the FIFA corruption scandals and its disgraced stars, as well as the rabid commercialization of the sport, a phenomenon that most top players can't seem to help but succumb to. Of course, some more so than others. Yeah. 
But above all, the goal is to show the universality of football, from the suburbs of Paris to the roads of Algiers and Casablanca, and the sense of unity it inspires amongst the fans. For Bethlehem native Hani Talgir, kicking a football offered relief from the Israeli occupation. Her passion for the sport helped her overcome sexism and prejudice, driving her to co-found and captain the first ever Palestinian national women's football team. I managed together with uh, my colleague from Bethlehem University to create the women's football team in such a difficult circumstances because we believe that we deserve a better future and also we want to represent our identity through football and show a different story, not only about the Palestinians but about women specifically. It's more than just a game, especially for those in the margins of society. In Spain, a third division team is made up exclusively of migrants from sub-Saharan Africa. Its name, Alma of Africa, the soul of Africa. No big corporate sponsors are splashed over their jerseys. Instead, it's Article 14 of the Declaration of Human Rights, which reminds us that every person has the right to asylum in the face of persecution. You might imagine that slam poetry takes place in hip clubs and literary festivals, but since spoken word needs nothing more than a voice and an audience, it's being performed all over the world, anytime, anywhere. One young slammer from Gabon is a case in point. Frank Noel Makusu doesn't need a stage, he's just as comfortable rapping outside his front door in Libreville. Also known as No, he's won Gabon's national slam competition twice already at just 28 years old. He says that since his hometown's lacking in cultural infrastructure, slam is perfect as a spontaneous, accessible form of expression. And it even gives him the opportunity to tackle some tricky issues. Let's hear from him. The artist, too, has another point of view that he gives. He's also a kind of representative for the neighborhood, you know? Because we don't all have the courage to be silent, let alone when it comes to our own land. Let's talk about the people, about embezzlement, forgery of documents, the price of appropriations, or even non-justification of certain arrests. Let's talk about the dead, the martyrs, love and freedom of speech. Next, we're taking a look at two schools of dance that were both born of humble beginnings. They then branched out into very different directions. Tango and breakdance are not usually mentioned in the same sentence, but it seems like the streets of New York and the dance halls of Buenos Aires are not so far removed once you've seen them fused together in this show, Break the Tango. It's on at the Paris Casino until the end of the month. Erin Ogunke has this report. Dancers from Argentina, Korea and Italy. But for the past couple of months, they've found common ground while training in Zurich. A former industrial wasteland transformed into a new adventure for these dancers. On the one hand, tango, invoking images of passionate lovers in Buenos Aires. And on the other, breakdance, born in the heart of the Bronx. It's easy to recognize the b-boy spin, but this is where any resemblance to anything you may have seen before stops. It's a daring fusion of styles, one that appears to be well worth the risk. Unexpected choreography that mixes performance, rhythm, and sensuality. I put them in a rehearsal room for one week, and then I came back on Friday, and I said, if you have a smile on your face, we do the show. If you cry, we don't do it. They had such a big smile on the face, and uh, it was an ex experiment uh, for sure. Months of rehearsal and dancers that boast international experience in both styles. Some of them have even been recognized as world champions. But for this unique collaboration, they had a lot to learn. We, with the tango dancers, we work more about, you know, timing and fixing precision in some steps. And with the b-boys, we work more on the spacing. The experience with the breakdancers was very enriching. 
because tango is a very melancholic dance. And they showed us that tango could be a party. A party that lasts for two hours. And its contagious energy leaves the audience asking for more. Break the Tango was shown in Switzerland and Germany before coming to Paris, bringing a wave of heat to the French capital this autumn. We're finishing with an exhibition that takes its inspiration from the seven days of the week. Days are dogs, sees French artist Camion Hall take over the cavernous space of Paris's Palais de Tokyo with a series of installations having been given free reign over the gallery. There are massive bronze sculptures, talking telephones, 3D video, and of course, Henri's playful and subversive paintings. We'll leave you with a taste of that show. Remember to check out our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. Reporters, presented by Mark Owen.